the celebration of... The Capital One Bowl Week continues from Las Vegas, the land of extravagance and exorbitance, where risk and reward lurk around every corner. And today, the most coveted and courted woman in town is Lady Luck. But a couple of teams on the field today hoping to leave nothing to chance. The UCLA Bruins and the New Mexico Lobos. We're nestled in the base of the Sunrise Mountains, Sam Boyd Stadium for the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. It's a matchup between the Mountain West Conference and the Pac-10. New Mexico taking on the UCLA Bruins. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Bob Davey and Mike Godfrey. Thanks for coming aboard. From all of us here at ESPN to all of you at home, a very Merry Christmas and all the best in the upcoming year. Bob, let's start off talking about these two teams, two teams at different ends of the emotional spectrum. Right Mark, now. the best thing New Mexico has going for them, they are truly excited to be here, and they should. It's only their second bowl game since 1961, playing UCLA today on national television, arguably the most highly visible game the school's ever played in. The second thing, they finished the year on a positive. They have some momentum. They won five of their last seven games. Rocky Long, Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. Dontrell Moore, Freshman of the Year in the Mountain West. And Mike, UCLA, clearly more talent. But New Mexico, to me, has the advantage of the intangibles. Bob, if this was a beauty contest, you'd pick UCLA because they have their bigger, stronger, and faster, better-looking football team. But will they play? They got a lot of distractions. Bob Toledo got fired. The assistant coaches are looking for jobs. They're going to pressure the two young quarterbacks. We'll see what happens. A couple of freshman quarterbacks today in Olsen and Matt Moore. And we are set, folks, to kick it off. New Mexico wins the toss. They defer to the second half. The Bruins will receive the opening kickoff. UCLA coming in with a record of 7-5, and five, having dropped their last two games against Washington State and USC. As for New Mexico, well, we just chronicled some of their late season success. They won five of their last seven. Back deep for the Bruins, it's Mathis and Tad Perry. This will be Perry at the five. Perry with a nice middle return, making it out to the 31-yard line. Holly Rowe down in the field has more on the coaching situation. Holly? UCLA has a new head coach, Carl Dorrell, but he is not here coaching this game. Instead, the interim head coach is Ed Kazarian. He is an athletic director of academic support, but he has been a coach before. Although he hasn't been on the sidelines for 10 years, he says he's had to review the rules. He will rely on the other nine assistant coaches. He's going to try to stay out of the way of the defensive and offensive coordinator, but he's got a lot of enthusiasm for the Bruins. All right, Holly, and certainly he looks good on the sidelines with the headset. Certainly doesn't lack for motivation. This is Ebel between the tackles on the first play of the ball game. Got about two yards out to the 33-yard line. Drew Olsen is the starting quarterback. Three touchdowns and three interceptions on the season. Took over midway through the year when Corey Paus broke his leg. Let's take a look at the Coors Light starting lineups. Ebel, the sensational freshman running back, White, Bragg, Perry, and Seidman, a talented tight end. Second down and about seven to go for the Brewers. Ebel again moving the pile out to the 38-yard line. Spiegel making the stop. Here's a look at the big, strong Bruin offensive line. Bryce Bolander, one of the leaders up front along with Safer. Mark, they are big, and as you see early in this football game, an excellent run-blocking offensive line. The Lobos, meanwhile, playing that 3-3-5 formation. Going against that defensive front. Kegler. One of the leaders up front along with Renteria. Third down and about four to go for UCLA. They run the jailbreak screen. Complete but short of the first down. Zach Rupp making the stop on number eight, Junior Taylor. It's three and out for UCLA. Here's a look at the linebackers. Charles Moss, New Mexico's leading tackler. And Mark, you talked about the 3-3-5 configuration. You see here five defensive backs. And watch number nine, Brandon Radcliffe, and number three, Terrell Golden. The two wolf backs, they'll blitz 80% of the game today. 
A very unconventional, kind of an orthodox defense for New Mexico. Works on this first series. Dwight Counter is standing on his own 15-yard line for the Lobos. Fitzy, the punter, gets a high spiral off. Comes down to the 17. Counter tackled immediately on the play. Great special teams coverage. And a tackle by Joe Hunter for the Bruins after that 44-yard punt. Casey Kelly's the starting quarterback for the Lobos, a 6'3", 193-pound junior, completing 58% of his passes, 13 touchdown tosses on the season. Let's take a look at the Coors Light starting lineups for the Lobos. Moore, the talented freshman running back in the backfield. They need to run the football, Mark, and the play-action pass. That's what they want to do. First down and 10 for New Mexico. Nose of the ball resting at the 17. Four receivers out to the left of Kelly. And it's the receiver screen complete. Dontrell Moore, the running back, makes the catch on the play. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Lensmeyer, the second team All Mountain West player, the leader up front, number 64. Going up against this defensive front, Williams, Morgan, Leslie, and Ball. Second down for New Mexico. Mark, you see already in this football game, New Mexico does more on offense and defense of any team we've watched all year. You saw them with the unique four on one side empty formation on first down. Now they're back in high bounds. Handed off to Dontrell Moore, who put it on the ground. He's had a fumble all year, pretty much. Had troubles holding on to it. And Brandon Schiller recovers the fumble after the hit by Matt Ware. Mark, you mentioned Dontrell Moore having a hard time as a freshman protecting the football. You see here on the second play of the game, the big hit by number 17, Matt Ware, the corner, and New Mexico's worst nightmare, turning the football over. Brandon Schiller with the fumble recovery. Mike, UCLA right here in great field position. Yeah, Bob Moore has lost seven fumbles in a six-game span, so he coughs it up. He's trying to remedy it, but... The fumble bug rearing its ugly head for Moore today. First down and 10. Bruins working with a short field. Ebo brought down for a loss of about two on the play. Good surge. Fashola up front. Mark, you're going to see a unique defense today. The 3-3-5 concept of New Mexico. Rocky Long actually with Joe Lee Dunn a long time ago had the opportunity to put this defense into New Mexico. And if you look before the snap, you're going to see how they line up all five of these defensive backs in a straight line so there's no pre-snap read for the quarterback. And this can cause havoc, particularly for a freshman quarterback, Mike. Well, you just saw it, Bob, because a freshman quarterback, once he gets his hands under center, the defense is going to move. The longer he takes to call that snap count, dead ball foul, false start. That gets the offense, movement in the offensive line prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still second down. The more problems he's going to get because he's going to get a lot of movement. Drew Olson, the freshman quarterback we're referring to, he started the last five games of the season after Corey Powell broke his leg. Young, accurate with his passing, but looking for a degree of consistency here. Second down and 18. Olsen back to pass. Incomplete. Intended for Tab Perry. It'll be third down and long now. In talking to the UCLA coaches, they think it's a must that they get early success because their ball club has had the last two games. They turned the football over. Good coverage right here by New Mexico. Pretty well thrown ball that time by Olsen. Tab Perry coming back from an ankle injury. Getting back to full speed just this week. Third down and 18. Carter in motion, the tight end. Olsen to pass under pressure. And it's stripped away from Olsen. But the Bruins got it back. Billy Struther, the two-time Mountain West Conference Player of the Week, making a big play. 
you see early on the chaos and the confusion that New Mexico's defense causes. Moss, the linebacker, comes on block, and in the strip from the backside by Billy Strother, the linebacker, Mike, this team blitzes 85% of the time. And right there, third and 18, UCLA played right into their hands. Freshman quarterback, he's not seen these looks. Fixie attempting a long feet. field goal for the Bruins. He's made his last 10. Make it 11 in a row. Nate Fixie from 42 yards out gives the UCLA Bruins a 3 to nothing lead. We are underway at the Capital One Bowl Week and the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. UCLA taking advantage of the turnover. We'll be back. All right, back at Sam Board Stadium, just underway, 3-0, UCLA converting after the turnover. Mark, if I was Kazarian, the interim coach out onside kicker, he's got a one-game contract. What does he care? <laughs> Wait a second now, Mike. Wait a second. You know Rocky Long is just as nervous thinking that same thing, but he decides to kick it deep. <laughs> They're going to bring it out of the end zone. It's number four, Brandon Gregory. Gregory brought down at the 23-yard line. Folks, Capital One Bowl Week double dip today. Continuing on ESPN 8 Eastern Time, Hawaii. Taking on Tulane, the Green Wave. It's the inaugural Canagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. A Timmy Chang, quarterback for Hawaii, quite a talent for the Rainbow Warriors. And we have a flag down on the play. On a return, holding against the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Hey, Bob, not the kind of start that Rocky Long wanted. Not at all, Mark, but give credit to New Mexico's defense on that sudden change opportunity on the last possession. After the fumble, UCLA took over on the 21-yard line, and New Mexico was able to hold into a field goal. First down and 10 as they place the ball on the 14-yard line. Casey Kelly, a quarterback. Little option series here. And they put it on the ground again, but this time fortunate enough to get it back. Dontrell Moore recovered the fumble. Let's take a look at the Bruin linebackers. Spencer Havner, Marcus Reese, and Brandon Chiller, who we've seen a couple of times already today. Marcus Reese, the leading tackler. Brandon Chiller a lot on the zone blitz coming from the field, number 11. Guys, a couple of talented corners in the secondary for the Bruins. Yeah, Ricky Manning, very good. Matt Ware started as true freshman last year. But a nervous offensive football team, Bob, for New Mexico. No question, Mike. And you have to wonder, coming and pitching that football right there, Got to get it out. They the young get freshman some... tailback, maybe just put the ball in his hands and be somewhat conservative right here. Well, they run the fly series to Boyd, and he's brought down to the 15-yard line. And let's go down to Holly for more on the troubles of Dontrell Moore and fumbling. Well, guys, Dontrell Moore had a career-high 181 yards against Colorado State, but two first-half fumbles cost them a chance for the conference championship. After that, he had his trainer, Rudy Garcia, cut the leg off a of Lycra tight put it over the football so that it was slippery. He used that ball every day in drills since and hadn't fumbled the football until today. They've taken him out of the game. They're trying to settle him down on the sidelines here. We'll see if they're successful. Third down and eight. He's one of their key cogs offensively. Can't have him out for long, and the pass is dropped over the middle. Intended for Joe Manning, number 24. And they'll have to punt, but good pressure up front by Rodney Leslie. Excellent coverage right there by Ricky Manning on the shallow crossing route to Joe Manning. And once again, Mike, UCLA is going to have great field position here. And New Mexico's defense is going to have to carry the load for a while for this football team because this offensive uh, starting lineup for New Mexico is just a nervous football team now. They haven't been in bowl for a long time. Second bowl since 1961. That's, yeah, that, I consider nervous, that a long time. Yeah. Tyler Goss getting set to punt. Gets off a high but short spiral, and Craig Bragg will let it bounce at midfield. And for the second consecutive series, UCLA's offense will start with very propitious field position after the 35-yard punt. Kind of looks like New York, folks, but don't be fooled. That's what Vegas is all about, the illusion. We'll be right back. We come to Vegas to see people painted in all colors, blue and red. UCLA with a 3-0 lead, 8.31 to play in the first quarter, and guys, uh, 
So far, New Mexico relying on its defense. Yeah, they need a good defensive series here. They're not as good on offense. They can't afford to go down 10 to nothing. We see UCLA in two tights again. Look out. Picked up. Down. And this could come back the other way. Desmar Black, one man to beat. Touchdown, Lobos. Mike, you talk about freshman quarterbacks, freshman mistake. UCLA clearly with momentum on their time on their side, and look who's in to attempt the extra point. It is number two, Katie Harinda, the place kicker. First time that she has ever kicked in a game. I'm going to give her an applause right now. Of course she kicks. A moment for posterity and history here in college football. And for the Lobos, and it's blocked. That's why I did it before she kicked. They should have snapped it to her direct and faked it right there and let her run it in. The extra point blocked. Certainly wasn't for lack of effort, though, as a 55-yard interception return gives the Lobos a 6-3 lead. And for more on Katie, let's go down to Holly. Guys, Katie Ignita just found out before the game that she would be kicking the first extra point attempt. She was so nervous, she asked the team chaplain to say a prayer for her. Now, this is the first time she's kicked in a game. She said this has been a wonderful experience at the University of New Mexico. She changes in closets, the back of trucks, everywhere else away from the team. She says the guys have been great and that uh, even baked cookies for the guys. Now, that's my only complaint. I don't think she should be baking cookies and wearing pads. <laughs> All right. Six to three in New Mexico. Just to mention that they were relying on their defense, and the defense guys comes up with a huge play to put some points on the board. Mark, you get a misread by the quarterback, Drew Olson, uh, and they, I think what Bob talked about, the five across secondary is throwing him off, and uh, New Mexico needed that badly. Tad Perry back for the kick. but this will be Perry at the 20. Tab Perry brought yeah, down Perry at the 28 yard the line. Let's take one more look at that pickoff by Black. Mike, exactly what we talked about. Look at the secondary back here, both the corner and the safety with depth, and then you're going to see the corner roll up and change the coverage. The quarterback, Olsen, thought it was soft coverage. It, it ended up being a two deep zone. Desmar Black steps up. Once again, as you said, a misread by the quarterback, pre-snap disguise, and Desmar Black takes it to the house. You know what I like about this, old Bob? Drew Olson throws the pick. He thinks he's got the opening, but then he hustles back to try to make the play. I like that about him. Here comes Ebo, and he got rocked. I'll tell you what, Mike, I can tell you're an old quarterback coach, because if you're trying to find a positive in that, <laughs> I'll I can see if he'd have knocked him and the ball would have flown yeah. out of bounds on the two-yard yeah, line. You're stretching there. I like <laughs> effort. Yard on I like that effort on the, uh, the New, New Mexico defense. Tyler Ebell got stung on that play. He got knocked back. The Lobo's howling right now, fellas. Knows the ball on the 29-yard line, second down and nine. Second down. The back's lining up out of the eye this time. Olsen back to pass. It's Bragg for the first down. At the 45-yard line, Black making the stop on the play in on the coverage. We're here at Sam Boyd Stadium for the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. It's the Mountain West Conference, New Mexico taking on the Pac-10's UCLA Bruins. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Mike Gottfried, Holly Rowe down in the field. And guys, uh, boy, UCLA coming into this game, uh, somewhat a large favorite at 10 and a half points. But the Lobos surprising and shocking some people so far. First down and 10. Ebel between the tackles, a small guy, and just a buck 75, plowing his way out to the 45-yard line, stopped by Brandon Ratcliffe. Mike, something you're going to see throughout this game is gap blocking by UCLA. Block everybody down. They send Mercedes in motion, and they hand the ball on the kickout play. Gap blocking, kickout scheme. 
to counteract this stunning moving defense of New Mexico. Yeah, that, and that's the way you pick up all the garbage when you block down. The other thing is you block zone because you step as an offensive lineman and block whoever comes into your area. So we're going to see zone blocking and gap blocking. And, Mike, you had to love Drew Olson coming back and making that throw on the curl a couple plays I'm ago. I'm a quarterback guy. I like it. <laughs> hey, Bob, you know people born square don't die round. He'll never change. <laughs> This is what we talked about UCLA first 10 games what what they had last two games they had seven turnovers and gave the defense tough field position because most of those turnovers were inside their own 30 yard line yeah, that game especially against USC a real disaster first down and 10 for UCLA they give it to the first man through the fullback Manny White gets about two or three on the play White a huge load at 6'3", 243, Spiegel making a stop. Mike, in all your years of coaching, have you ever heard of an assistant athletic director in charge of academics taking over as the head football coach for the Bulldogs? No. I, I, first of all, I think Bob Toledo should be here. When you start the season as a head coach, you finish the season. And uh, when I was coaching at Pittsburgh, they fired me and I didn't get to coach in the bowl game. And that's wrong, and Bob Toledo should be here to see his team through the final game. Well, you would think at least a chance to address his team at some point. Olsen back to pass. Overthrows his intended receiver, Craig Bragg. And UCLA got off to a pretty good start this season, 4-1. and one. But then they had the quarterbacking injury to Drew, pardon me, to Corey Pouse, and then things really changed directions quickly. Ended up with the termination of head coach Bob Toledo and subsequently the hiring of Carl Durrell as the head coach on December the 18th. A couple things, Mark, as we'll see as this game progresses. First of all, Corey Poss got hurt. Two true freshman quarterbacks. Not redshirt freshmen, but true freshman quarterbacks. We have a timeout on the field called by the Bruins. The Lobos howling out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Brought 10 busloads, folks, and they're making some noise right now. We'll be right back. M's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Sega Sports and by Chrysler. Drive equals love. A look at part of the ostentation here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Got to stay out of the casinos, boys. Ostentation. Yeah, it's pompousness. Little big, big for a Youngstown <laughs> State graduate and Morehead State graduate. <laughs> Third down and eight. They set up the screen, and it is blown up right at midfield. Manny White got hit immediately by Daniel Kegler. The Kegler is just sitting there, Bob, waiting on this screen pass. Looks like maybe a little bit of zone blitz, and he makes the play. And again, New Mexico's defense rises to the occasion. And you see there, Mike, UCLA staying away from trying to throw the football down the field, trying to help the freshman quarterback keep his confidence. Fixie the punt, standing on his own 37-yard line. White counter, a little bounce. Hit a UCLA player. And there's a flag down to the point at the 17-yard line. A 31-yard punt by Nate Fixie, the senior, who doubles up as UCLA's place kicker as well. Lobo's best offense has been their defense. What about that? I think a silly penalty here on New Mexico of holding on a kick that was virtually non-returnable from the beginning. So once again, field position completely in favor of UCLA here early in this game, Mike. Bob, they got to get Dontrell Moore back in this football game. He's their running back that can control the game on the uh, ground. You know, in New Mexico, no question, likes to run the football and play great defense. But UCLA is a big During the, the kick, defense. holding against the receiving team, the penalty is half the distance to the goal, first down. Casey Kelly will have the range of the Lobo offense when we come back. New Mexico with the lead, 6-3. My name's Casey Kelly. I just want to wish all my family and friends back in Portland, Oregon, a Merry Christmas. Now, Casey, a real portrait of courage. He suffered a broken arm in the first quarter against Texas Tech on national TV. Feared that he might be lost 
for the rest of the season, but he came back just three weeks later, still playing guys with a plate in his left arm. Amazing story. First down and 10 for the Lobos, once again with poor starting field position. On the out and up, and he just missed Adrian Boyd. He had him open. Talk about Casey Kelly, Mark. He's the son of a high school football coach in Portland, so he's kind of a coach on the field for Rocky Long. No question. And right there, Mike, you got him into the right play. UCLA in a 6-1 all-out blitz, straight man-to-man -man out on the corner. Just couldn't get the ball to Joe Manning right there, but he got him in the right play. Completing 58% of his passes, Casey Kelly, former walk-on from uh, Portland, Oregon. Awarded a full ride in the season uh, last year. Pretty hot hand of late. Second down and 10. Has a man complete for the first down at the 32-yard line. Dwight Counter making the catch. New Mexico brought the white counter across on motion, and right here you see him running the corner route. UCLA in quarters coverage, and the safety just can't get enough width to cover him. And a great throw right there by Casey Kelly. Mike, big, big first down. Yeah, right there. because you get out of the your own end zone. That's the 31st catch by Dwight Counter. And now, Mike, don't you have to get the ball back in you your gotta, freshman tailback's hands? And gotta run the confidence. football. See if uh, Dontrell Moore can regain and recapture some of his poise. Two hands on the ball that time, and Moore brought down after a gain of about four yards. Moore having a fantastic season, over 1,100 yards rushing coming into this one. Mike, can you notice something with New Mexico? A lot of what we call a fly series, where you see the wide receiver motion across. We're going to get a chance to see it right here. You're going to see Joe Manning come across on motion, and they'll snap the ball right when Joe Manning or Adrian Boyd is behind the quarterback. So in essence, it's a three-back set. Yeah, deceptive. Second down and five to go. The backup tailback, Landrick Brody. Now Brody brought down by Marcus Reese. See, here's where you find out, Mark, what UCLA, the distractions, because I keep thinking they're not going to play. And they're, they're looking for the plane ride out of here. Uh, and if they don't stop New Mexico right now, I mean, things are going to go downhill for them fast. Mike, can you feel like right now for New Mexico, a chance to do something a little different, maybe a trick play right here? Because as you mentioned, momentum's now swung on the side of New Mexico. So look for something right here to try to get the ball down the field. First and 10, that's Boyd in motion on the fly series, but Kelly, Kelly keeps it himself. Folks, Capital One Bowl Week continuing tomorrow on ESPN with two more games. The evening begins with College Game Day Special presented by Outback at 4.30 Eastern at 5. It's Boston College taking against, taking on uh, Toledo. And then number 23, Pittsburgh, taking on Oregon State in the Motor City Bowl and the Insight Bowl, respectively, at 5 Eastern and 8.30 Eastern, respectively. More information, log on to ESPN.com. Mark Toledo's a very fine football team. BC is going to get a hold of tomorrow. Uh, Tom Adams, that's uh, one of the rising stars in the coaching fraternity for Toledo. There's Kelly back in the ball game. It was Malay on the last play, and boy, he got rocked. Faoa making the stop on the play, drilling Casey Kelly. You see New Mexico go with the empty set run the quarterback draw. And Mike, watch this hit right here. Retracing his steps on the draw. The defensive lineman, Faoa, great hit. Fortunately, Casey Kelly didn't cough up that football because he put his face right on that ball. Third down and five for the Lobos, just short of midfield. UCLA coming with the blitz right here, all out blitz. Kelly runs the screen, a great call against the blitz. Moore, had he broken that tackle, he had a lot of real estate in front of him. But they pick up the first down, nonetheless, at the 43-yard line. Spencer Havner making the stop. Excellent play call right here, Mike, by Dan Dodd, the offensive coordinator. 
They catch him in straight man-to-man -man coverage, throw the ball to the fullback right here. And this thing right now, you talk about open field tackling. Look at all this grass if they do not make that tackle right there, Mike. One tackle by Hayden saved a touchdown. Backs lining up out of the eye on first down and 10. Moore trying to capture some of that confidence. Got about three. Mike, I think you brought up a great, great point about we knew coming into this game, if things went according to the plan for UCLA, that UCLA would be tough to beat. But we also knew if it didn't go according to plan, UCLA could start to cave in because of all the distractions and its lack of stability. Just think of this, Bob, for New Mexico. To beat UCLA would be a big win in the school's history. For UCLA playing New Mexico, and then all those distractions throws them off. Second down and six. Manning in motion. And whistles and flags on the play. Guys, I want to ask you, you're both still very much uh, coaches at heart. When Moore fumbles twice early in the ballgame, losing one of them, do you risk losing him by sitting him on the sidelines or do you keep him in there? Start for you got to have him in there. He's got to get right back in there. But you made a point, Mark. He's now double clutching that football. It's like a paycheck right now he's carrying through that line. He's not going to lose it again. You got to... What brought you here, you got to stay with it. Moore, meanwhile, closing in on a single-season rushing record for New Mexico. Leading 113 to eclipse that mark. That's the game in New Mexico with two tights in the game. Shifts out to the four on one side, empty formation. Dontrell Moore in motion. Gonna run the option to the weak side. Moore on the pitch. Made one guy miss. And Moore out of bounds at the 39 yard line. I like these funky looks by Rocky Long. And I'll tell you what, Mike. The instability or lack of stability in the coaching staff at UCLA, what a tough, tough team to prepare for with New Mexico because you see how much they do on defense with the 3-3-5, three, three, but on offense, we've seen everything in football so far from New Mexico. Yeah, and when you have a bowl game, you got so much time to prepare extra game planning against UCLA. And that what they're trying to do is overload UCLA mentally so they that their feet don't move. They don't know what's coming up next. Third down and five. Kelly back to pass. A screen to Moore. And he got the first down, depending on the spot. It's going to be close. Page making the tackle on the play for the Bruins. Penalty two, Mark, and they're going to get another 15 yards on UCLA. Late hit. Back to back third downs, Mike. They come with the screen pass. Excellent play calling by New Mexico. They slow down in that rush of UCLA's defensive line and the blitzing. After the play, dead ball, personal foul against the defense for a late hit. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Mike, it's going to be on Ryan Bachetti, number 75, defensive lineman, showing good effort chasing the football on the screen, but just a silly, silly play right there to come in late. And with four seconds to go now, New Mexico inside the red zone. That's the end of the first period of play, and Rocky Long said this bowl vindicates a bunch of people that turned around a season that was headed south real quickly. The Lobos threatening when we come back. Back at the base of the Sunrise Mountains, part of the beautiful landscape here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl, beginning the second quarter here. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Mike Gottfried, and Holly Rowe down on the field. The crew in red with the lead right now, 6-3. There's a look at New Mexico in the red zone. Justin Malay in at quarterback number 11. On the fade. Caught but out of bounds, incomplete to Dwight Counter. Covered by Matt Ware. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Some of the pertinent points of the game so far. And the big play, that interception return, 55 yards by Desmar Black of the errant throw from Drew Olson. And then the first ever female to kick in a bowl game, Katie Anita. 
having her extra point attempt unfortunately blocked, but still a historical moment in bowl play. This is the 12th play of the drive for New Mexico. Casey Kelly back in at quarterback on second and 10. And Moore drops it, incomplete. Check that, it was Adrian Boyd. Bob, Mike, what about having that historical moment? They missed the extra point, your thoughts? Mark, here, here's my opinion. If Katie Hanenda is the next best kicker, or she is the best kicker, that gives you the best opportunity to make this a seven to three football game, then she should kick. Gotcha. If she's not the best kicker, you're doing the other players on that team a disservice by having her kick that extra point. Unless they bought into it and they said, hey, we're gonna do this for the team. That's the only way exactly. I'd let her kick the uh, extra point. Rocky Long, guys, uh, maybe measuring a little risk against reward like many people do here in Vegas. We have a timeout on the field called by New Mexico and the Lobos playing some very inspired football, winning five of the last seven down the stretch. Rocky Long, a guy who grew up in Southern California, grew up a Bruin fan, in fact. We'll be right back. New Mexico with a 6-3 lead here in the second quarter just underway. And folks, bold people, you better keep an eye on Lobo fans because they have traveled very well here to this Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Third down and 10 for the Lobos. Counter in motion. Malay on the reverse and the throwback. He's got a man, but his receiver falls down. Incomplete intended for Mike Bruckner. They had it, Mark. And they had the touchdown pass, and the receiver fell down. Brunker. Well, once again, Mike, you see a wide receiver trying to throw a touchdown pass, and I'm sure they worked on this all camp. He is wide open in the end zone. You see it right here, but the ball's thrown over his outside shoulder, Zach and the Cressip. tight end yep. cannot adjust to that football. Yeah, Zach Cressip. And Kenny Bird, the true freshman kicker, is in to attempt the field goal. It's one of one on the season. And he hooks it to the left from 34 yards out. An opportunity gone by the wayside. Guys, so many things happening with these players. Uh, a great week for both teams. Part of it Saturday, a pie-eating contest. This is kind of nasty. It's a lot of calories right there on the plate there, Mike and Bob. They do a good job here in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, Sega Sports, Tina Kunzer, Murphy, uh, the uh, bowl representative here. They, both teams are happy they're here, and they enjoyed it. Mike, they do a great job. And yesterday at the luncheon, Deacon Jones gave one of the greatest stocks. If you're a defensive player that I've ever heard given at one of these functions. And in a quarterback is Matt Moore, and he gets a rude reception from Ratcliffe, who Britt blitzes him and brings him down. Matt Moore getting the start here in the second quarter, a little bit more mobile than Drew Olson. Started versus Stanford and led him to a victory, but again, he's seeing a defense that uh, you need a lot of preparation time uh, to excel against. And you see that Wolfback number nine. Brandon Ratcliffe, Mike, coming on the blitz. Once again, the five across the board look in the secondary. As that was their 35th sack of the season. Now they run the draw, the Bruins do. Find a little bit of success. Number 29, Manny White. Even a punishing and bruising runner. Manny White is a big, strong, fullback-looking type. But they play him in the one back a lot as the remaining back. And you see him right here come on the draw. And I want to see you watch him finish this run right here, Mike. He runs through the safety number six, Sidney Wiley. Excellent play call. Excellent execution on the draw. UCLA ought to be able to run against New Mexico. But Mike, once again, it's third and nine. Yeah. Advantage to New Mexico. Look at this coverage back here. No pre-snap read for the quarterback. Moore trying to figure it all out. They're 0 for 3 on third downs. Completes the pass to Junior Taylor. And Junior Taylor knocked out of bounds right at the 27-yard line, and it's short of the first down. Here's the other thing, Mark. When you go in this football game, UCLA's defense 
gave up a drive to start it at the nine yard line. The innings ended with the missed field goal. Now, New Mexico is going to get this football right back again, and your defense got to be right back on the field, Bob. Mike, can you look at this punt formation for UCLA with the two wideouts on the same side? A unique punt formation. Look for the kicker to kick the ball to his right to take advantage of the coverage with the two gunners on the same side. Third punt of the day for Fixie. They come after him and almost got to him. Counter lets it bounce. And it takes a Bruin bounce at the 38-yard line. Mike, that punt should have been blocked by number 17, Billy Struther, right there. Yeah, UCLA just, got away with one. Just make a mental note of that the next time they punt the football. And Struther acting like that was one that just got by and that just got away. A close call for Fixie kicking the ball. We'll be right back. Job. Rocky Long, the head coach of the Lobos, just giving some instructions to his defense moments ago. Lobos on offense right now. Casey Kelly in a quarterback. That last drive when they missed the field goal, 13 plays using up about 5.37 on the clock. Under 13 minutes to play here in the first half. First down and 10 for New Mexico. Moore brought down just shy of the 40. And boy, New Mexico guys almost got to that last punt. Boy, in man-to-man -man punt protection, the tackle has number two, the second guy from the outside. UCLA ends up with two guys blocking number three, and they let Billy Struther come clean from the outside. So the tackle didn't block out on the number two man. Billy Struther, Mike, almost blocked that. Second down and eight. See another formation from New Mexico right here. Kelly drops back and almost is picked off, and it's caught at the 43. Boy, great concentration by Brian Penley. Yeah, Spencer Habner should have had the interception on this, which would have flipped the field for UCLA. Mike, kind of a different play. They start the zone option to one side, then the throwback. And as you mentioned, Spencer Habner had a chance for the interception. But when momentum's on your side, <laughs> good things continue to happen. Uh, the town where Lady Luck always figures prominently. New Mexico catching a break, third down and four. Habner, meanwhile, a freshman All-American, one of a couple on that Bruin defense. Kelly surveying the defense out of the shotgun this time. Manning in motion on the fly series. Kelly keeps it himself and tiptoes out of bounds at the 46-yard line. See where they spot this. Looks like he's close to the first down. Not sure that he got enough. I think he's short, Mark. It's going to be fourth down for New Mexico. And the way you're playing defense, you got to punt the football. Rocky Long, the Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year, spent two years coaching at UCLA, was admittedly looking forward to coaching this game before the firing of his friend and former head coach, Bob Toledo. Fourth down and two. Goss gets off a returnable punt. Ebel has a little bit of room. A flag down on the play, and Ebel brought down at the 40-yard line. Tyler Goss, the punter, making the tackle on the play. And Mike, you see a lot of penalties in the kicking game. These teams haven't played in a while, and if you don't scrimmage the kicking game full speed, this is just what happens. It's just like the first game yeah. of the year again. I agree. A lot of mistakes and uh, field position lost. You know, the, when you go back, UCLA's going back on offense. Mike Seidman, the tight end, is a guy we have not called his name yet. He's a guy you have to get the football to. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Mike, I think that's a great point that Mike Seidman's had to stay in and maximum protect to protect these blitzes in New Mexico. They can't get them out in the route. When we come back from this break, we'll be speaking with the new head coach of the Bruins, Carl Durrell. They reached back and got one of their own as a head coach. I'm excited. I'm privileged. I'm honored to be the new coach here. Well, that was a week ago. Carl Durrell, the new head coach of the UCLA Bruins, now with the Denver Broncos as an assistant coach. and. 
He was named head coach on the 18th. As I mentioned, now with the Broncos' former coordinator at the University of Washington and at Colorado and a former wide receiver with the Bruins. So wide receivers on the field for the Bruins, probably good news for them. And uh, we'll be speaking with Carl in just a few moments. First down and 10 for UCLA. Lots of movement up front. And a flag on the play. Once again, you see the issue. Do you check at the line of scrimmage with the young freshman quarterback no. against those multiple looks, Mike? No. Let the play go. We have offside against the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. All right, we want to bring in Carl Durrell, who's joining us by telephone from Denver, Colorado. Carla, uh, first of all, congratulations and season's greetings. Want to know, first of all, do you have any kind of timetable set up for selecting your coaching staff? You know, uh, by the way, Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, you know, my timetable is, is obviously I'll be really busy this week. Uh, uh, I'm flying into Los Angeles tomorrow and get a chance to meet with a couple of representatives there. And then uh, I'm going to meet with the, the staff that's in the bowl game right now as we speak on Friday. So uh, it's going to be a busy week, but uh, the timetable obviously will be with the Carl, this is Bob Davey. Has the magnitude of what you've got yourself into hit you yet? Particularly being a UCLA graduate and having the opportunity to come back to your school and, and taking over this program? Uh, yeah, it has. You know, I think when I first uh, accepted the job, uh, I was more uh, starstruck, I guess. But now uh, I understand uh, the, the significance of this job and, and uh, these last uh, few days here, I've been really reflecting on uh, the staff and what uh, potential staff I'm trying to put together, and along with the uh, consideration of some of the coaches that, that are on the, the current staff. And there's a lot of things to think about, a lot more things to think about as a head coach than as an assistant. But uh, nonetheless, I'm excited about the, the opportunity. Carl, how many of these uh, coaches on the current staff you figured to uh, retain? You know, that, that's, I really don't know that number yet. You know, obviously, I'm going to keep a very good open mind uh, as I meet with all the individuals. Uh, and there's some particular things I'm looking for that, uh, obviously, if, if there are some philosophical uh, similarities from what I have with, with what they have, uh, you know, I'm, I just want to get a chance to get to know some of these guys and, and to see where they're coming from as a football coach and as a person. Carl, with two freshman high-profile quarterbacks, Drew Olson and Matt Moore, both freshmen, same year, a lot of competition. How are you going to keep both those guys and not have one of those guys transfer over the next couple of years? You know, definitely that's a big uh, challenge I had before me. Uh, both of them are very highly recruited kids and, and playing as two freshmen. I think, you know, we'll have to see how things unfold, actually, you know, when we get uh, things going in the program and, and uh, obviously getting to know one of, you know, both of them. Uh, you know, in, in trying to find find out what's important to them and what uh, you know what factors are involved uh, with them keeping them to both be brewing. So there's a lot of things that are on the table about that some situation, but I think we'll be able to work things out. Carl, uh, UCLA with a reputation for groundbreaking and pioneering, with the likes of Jackie Robinson and, and Arthur Ashe, and now yourself as one of just four African American head coaches in Division One in football. Uh, do you feel an extra sense, as some coaches do, or uh, some might call it even a burden of being able to be very successful early at UCLA? You know, I think any head coach, regardless of, uh, of skin color, is, is going to be uh, under the burden of being successful. You know, I know this is a significant uh, a part of history, me being one of the four black coaches in Division One, I. I understand the significance of that, but... Regardless of my color, I think that the biggest issue is that you got to win. Uh, and that's really what my focus is on the great institution I'm going to work for. Carl, thank you very much for joining us. Season's greetings and good luck in the future. I appreciate that, guys. Merry Christmas. Okay. Thank you, Carl. That's Carl Durrell, the newly named head coach of the UCLA Bruins. He'll be very busy in the next little while. And you see the talent that Carl Durrell is going to inherit here. Junior Taylor, Mike, I really like him, a young wide receiver. Also, Tab Perry and Craig Bragg. And the big tight end, Mike Seidman, who's graduating, but a lot of young players on this UCLA football team. First down and 10 for the Bruins from near midfield. 
That's Manny White. Well, Carl Durrell just one of several Division I coaching changes. Mike Price recently named the head coach at Alabama, and down the list we go, fellas. Interesting, Mike Price, who is a great guy and a great coach, Mike, going from Washington State to Alabama. You don't think the dynamics of his life have changed coaching at a high-profile place like Alabama where they live it 365 days a year. Yeah, he's going to need to, to hire some people in the state of Alabama to know where to go to find the recruits. Second and nine, Moore under pressure, gets it off and overthrows his receiver at the 10-yard line intended for Craig Bragg. 7.39 to go now in the first half, UCLA with just a field goal to show offensively. And interesting, you see UCLA there keep everybody in a one-receiver route with Craig Bragg going down the field. That's how paranoid they are, Mike, about getting pressure from this New Mexico defense. And they had a pretty good shot there because their receivers are better than the corners in New Mexico, if given time. Physically speaking, UCLA a very imposing-looking oh. team down in the field. We took a look at them before the game. They won the contest, the bus contest. <laughs> Here they come again, Mike. I think they're, they're off sides here. Flag down on the play. The reception made at the 35 by Greg Bragg, the go-to receiver, the leading receiver for the Bruins on the season. But there's a flag down at the 50-yard line, so hold on just a minute. Mike, and you're right, if UCLA can Offside, protect... gets a defense, that penalty is declined. The yardage is enough for a first down. Something you see with New Mexico. Rocky Long does not like to play bump and run. So, Mike, you see the depth in which these corners are playing off. They're going to take advantage of that, come down and run this simple square in route right here to Bragg. Rocky Long does not like bump and run, so those throws are there if they can protect. Bragg with 51 receptions coming into this one, team's leading receiver. This the ninth play of the Bruin drive. Backs out of the eye. Ebel. Brought down at the 29-yard line with a nice chunk of about six. Golden making the stop on the play. When you have two freshman quarterbacks, I think ben Matt Moore has benefited from the standpoint of being on the sideline and watching Drew Olson come out here and struggle. And all of a sudden now, Kelly Skipper, the offensive coordinator, is getting the feel for New Mexico, and Matt Moore is benefiting from that. From a personality standpoint, Moore a little bit more fiery and outspoken than Drew Olson. He pitches it to Ebel on the option. Not a great decision. Ebel brought down for a loss way back at the 38-yard line by Sidney Wiley. The logo back. You are going to see again Brandon Ratcliffe. They call him the wolf back. Here he is up the field, Mike. He's really a strong safety. Tough to run sideways against New Mexico because they bring so much pressure off the corner. He's got a pack of wolves with him, too. <laughs> he if he's the wolf, yeah, he's got a pack. Uh, this New Mexico defense, a treat to watch here. So far, third down and 11. Moore is going to sling it. And the official reaches for his flag as Seidman, the tight end, got downfield, guys. I think it's a bad call, Mark. Uh, he tripped. Their feet got tied up, and that ball was not going to be caught anyway. Fashola and Desmar Black were in on the coverage on the play, and we talked about how Seidman had been very silent by his inaction so far. And you're going to see on the replay, New Mexico only rushes three people. They have three or four guys back color covering Mike Simon. Mike, I agree with you. I'm not sure that was a catchable ball. No. The good thing about it, if there is any positive, it's only a 15-yard penalty in college football. Yeah, but it keeps the drive moving, and uh, they had them stopped. And you're right. New Mexico went into a kind of a prevent-style defense on that play with no pressure. There's a look at Olsen on the sidelines now. The signal caller, Matt Moore, his understudy in at quarterback, moving the team down to the 22-yard line. The Bruins with their best-looking drive of the ball game so far. Again, Mike UCLA with two tight ends in. Really, three tight ends on this play. Come with the power play off tackle again. Evo brought down shy of the 22-yard line at the line of scrimmage 
And let's talk about Tyler Rebo. 5'9", 170. We saw him at the luncheon the other day. He's a little guy, but he says, give me the ball. I got my mighty mouse tattoo. I can take it between the tackles. Mark, doing the Big Ten, we've had some short tailbacks. Uh, you look at uh, Russell, Freddie Russell from Iowa, uh, uh, White at uh, Wisconsin. But the difference, he's slightly built. He's about 165 pounds. He's not very big. Uh, second down and nine. Able to loan back. Pressure coming off the corner. Moore throws it up for grabs. Incomplete. That thing was up in the air a long time. For more on the mighty mouse, let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, Tyler Ebel has been small all of his life, but his dad, Dennis, is a Marine, and he instilled a pretty tough attitude in this young man. In fact, after his freshman year of high school, when he made the honor roll, his reward was the ability to get the Mighty Mouse tattoo. He also started wearing a Mighty Mouse t-shirt under his jersey. He's done it ever since that freshman year in high school. It's so little now, he's had to cut out the neck and arms, but he's still got it on under that jersey. He's buffing up, guys, huh? <laughs> I don't think New Mexico will sit back and play maximum zone coverage here this time. They learned last time, Mike, they're better off coming after him. And that's here what they, they do. Third and nine. Moore had it tipped to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and nine. Bronco Mendenhall, the defensive coordinator, and Rocky Long have got a feel for UCLA. You talked about three tight ends offense. They can't run the ball in three tight ends offense because it's like playing in a phone booth. And then when they open it up, they blitz them. And they're much better off, Mike, bringing the pressure. Fixie, meanwhile, guys, in for a field goal attempt. Here's where the missed extra point costs you right here if he makes this. A chance to tie it up, Fixie. Now two for two on the day. This one from 39 yards out. He's 12 of 13 on the season, two of two today. Hey, number seven, got him three on the board. We'll be right back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Las Vegas, the freedom from Dullsville. When Vegas calls, will you be ready? And Jeep, the most respected, honored, and heroic 4x4s out there. Only in a Jeep 4x4. Back at the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl, I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Mike Godfrey. And look at the scoring drive moments ago. 14 plays, home 57 yards, 621 on the clock, and capped by a 39-yard field goal. We got Holly Rowe down on the field. And an absolutely beautiful day here in the desert. down just shy of the 20-yard line. And, folks, Capital One Bowl Week continuing tomorrow on ESPN. Two more games. We start the evening with College Game Day Bowl Special presented by Outback at 4.30. In the Motor City Bowl at 5, 5 Eastern, Toledo will take on the Boston College Eagles. And then at 8.30, another Big East team, Pittsburgh, taking on Oregon State. Hey, guys, we saw Pitt early this year against Texas A&M. Couldn't get the offense going. What a tremendous turnaround with Rod Rutherford, especially quarterback. And Mark, they played great defense all year. But Rod Rutherford, the big freshman wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald. They've got some talent on that football team. Dontrell Moore, the pitch into the boundaries, brought down at the 25-yard line, gain of about five. Mike, we go back to that last UCLA drive, kicking the field goal. The significant play, the third down penalty, Mike Seidman, a big tight end down the field. You said it, the penalty kept the drive alive. UCLA gets the field goal. Bad call. <laughs> and this is a good officiating crew. Rogers, Redding, SEC, bad call. Second down and five. Dontrell Moore, the lone back, three receiver formation. Casey <laughs> Kelly. On the quick slant, complete at the 32-yard line by Terrence Thomas. Wow, we hung on to it. You see UCLA, not a nickel team. They leave their linebacker in the game. They have Spencer Havner out there, and it really doesn't matter who's out there because that's a great throw and a great catch right there by number 81, Terrence Thomas. But UCLA, Mike, doesn't substitute. They like keeping their four down linemen, their three linebackers in the game. New Mexico, 
feels like they can spread them out a little bit and take advantage of that. First down and 10, Manning in motion. They give it to Moore. Moore. And Moore runs it out to the 34-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, one of the questions you had before the game is UCLA, would they come to play today? Well, I can tell you the differences from the two sidelines and let you decide. UCLA, very attentive on the sideline. They're focused. They're asking their coaches questions, and they definitely are interested in this game. But there's an energy on the New Mexico sideline. The best way I can describe it, they're like kids opening presents on Christmas morning. They are hyper excited, and it's really showing up on the field. Yeah, so far, pretty good stocking stuff for two with six points on the board, raising some eyebrows collectively. Tied with the Bruins with 3.26 to go in the first half. Second down and eight. Adrian Berg had to carry his first of the ball game out to the 35-yard line. Dontrell Moore is hurt, and he's on the sideline, so now uh, that's going to affect the New Mexico offense. The other thing, I don't get a feel for either one of these offenses. They get something easy, you know, some big play. They got to work for everything they get. Mike, these are two pretty good defenses, yeah. though. You look at UCLA last year under Phil Snow, first in the Pac-10 in total defense. And up until the last two games this year, Washington State and USC, one, two, and three in every defensive category in the, big, in the Pac-10. So pretty talented defenses. On third and seven, incomplete. Casey Kelly facing Kelly a little bit of backside pressure. Complete. And in comes the punt unit, led by Tyler Goss for the Lobos. Meanwhile, Moore being attended to on the sidelines. If he sits down, they lose 1,100 yards in rushing. And what you don't like to do, obviously, is give this football back right now to UCLA with 234 left in the half. And Matt Moore heated up a little bit there at the, on his last possession. Craig Bragg drops deep. New like? Mexico with two true freshmen, a kicker and a punter in their special team. So huge advantage to UCLA in the kicking game. Goss gets off a high spiral at the 21-yard line. Bragg, nice return out to the 35-yard line. And a lot of fun and festivities here in the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Let's sing along. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. A lot of New Mexico people here. <laughs> it was the quarterbacks against the quarterbacks. Yeah. Sing Sorry, Mark. I don't want to. I, I know okay. you want your, your I'll Elvis. Do my Elvis thing, yeah. Elvis thing. <laughs> UCLA threesome of quarterbacks winning the event. Uh, Moore, Olsen, and uh, John Shara. First down and ten. Seidman in motion. Flag down. Incomplete. Hit Simon right in the hands. We're going to have an offsides on New Mexico. Uh, their right defensive end, Daniel Kegler, jumped the snap count a little bit, I believe. The other benefit when you're a new quarterback. Offside gets a defense, a player in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. All of a sudden, you've been listening to Cadence of, for a quarter of one quarterback, and then all of a sudden, Matt Moore, again, a benefit because he comes in, changes a, a Cadence a little bit, and he's got a couple offsides. Bottom line, Mike, do you like alternating quarterbacks or not? No. No, but it's worked for UCLA here. It's worked for UCLA here. UCLA here in this game. Matt Moore at the helm right now on the jailbreak screen. And that one well read. Junior Taylor made the catch, but had no room whatsoever. We made the comment yesterday, Mike, watching New Mexico practice, how small they were on defense. But I'll tell you what, I've got respect for them. Watch them fly to this football right here. And just count the number of white shirts that you see around that ball. And like you said, that's a pack of hungry, hungry yeah. wolves right there. <laughs> They're active. 146 to go in the first half. Tied at six, a defensive battle so far. Again, you see the wolf back creeping up, coming from the outside. This is Manny White. White brought down just over the 40-yard line at the 41. Got about four to go for the first down. 
Let's go downstairs to Holly. Hey, Holly, what's up with uh, Dontrell Moore? Well, Mark, right now he has a right ankle injury. They're still trying to evaluate him. He's walking along the sidelines. They think they can get him back in the game. They're going to give it a few minutes and reevaluate him in the locker room at halftime to see if he can rejoin the offense in the second half. They need him back. And they're real engaging, pleasant young man. Had a chance to visit with him at practice a couple of days ago. Third down and four. Sideman in motion. Almost picked off. Reese Davis, what's going on at halftime? Mark, coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, for those of us in the East watching the snow pile up, we'll be able to experience Christmas in Hawaii as we get ready for the second half of our Christmas Day Bowl doubleheader. We'll also check out who's flying under the radar, both in the bowl games and some players to watch in Capital One Bowl Week. And we'll also talk about the day after Christmas and a few games that you will not have to return because of a poor size. <laughs> you know, we saw Reese's hometown in his high school. We did the game down in Muscle Shoals, yeah. Alabama Division II. You know, I like going back to Crestline where there's no. pictures of you all down, up and down those oh, hallways. We had to bring that. Merry Christmas to everybody in Crestline, Ohio. <laughs> Merry Christmas. A great punt back to the five where it's fielded by Counter. A 54-yard punt. What that looked like a safety. What? Yeah, it was close. close. That really looked like a safety. Now, here's where UCLA, they got two timeouts. You're going to see quarterback sneaks here, and they got to force this punt right here. They got to work on getting the safety. New Mexico's got to get rid of 45 seconds. What a mistake. Dwight Counter that, fielded it. That's a safety. safety. That was close. No, it's not a safety. I think it's, it's a safety. What? It's on the inch line. Mike, which inch line? <laughs> Look now. Take your tape measure up. Hey, Look at the monitor. It doesn't right matter what your monitor shows. It, mo it matters where that football is lined up right there. You are beautiful. See that? Yeah. Right Tell there. me how that ball hey, could be spotted. right there. How can that ball be spotted on this side when he was tackled on that side of that line? I right. can't answer that, but they're going to quarterback sneak here. I can answer that. 99 yards and about 20 inches away from the end zone. Kelly. Casey Kelly keeps it himself, folks. Following us at 8 Eastern, our Christmas Day Capital One Bull Week double dip continues when Tulane takes on Hawaii and their explosive offense. It's the inaugural Canagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. And keep an eye on Timmy Chang, one of the more talented quarterbacks in D1 football, and already his name on the lips of many Heisman people voting next year, especially as head coaches pumping him up for the award. Hawaii's got a good football team. Mark uh, saw them against uh, Alabama. Very good defensive football team. Chang is going to be a Heisman candidate. All right, we got a break. And hey, if we're not in Hawaii, I'd love to be right here in Vegas. We'll be back. <laughs> Down and nine for New Mexico. Justin Malay now in a quarterback. He's still with a couple of timeouts remaining. Malay keeps it on the quarterback for me. Got about a yard. It'll be third down and about eight to go. For New Mexico. Let's take one Mike, more look at that. We have punch. to take a good look at this. And I know right now, Mark, I think it was a safety. Mike doesn't. You're the third member up here. No, I said I don't think it is because they put the ball in the half yard line. <laughs> That's why I said it's not a safety. I don't care what the pictures show, it's not a safety. <laughs> You want me to be, be the tiebreaker oh, yeah. in the middle of this, huh? No, stay out of it. <laughs> okay. Stay out Bob, of it. There's no point to get involved. Bob, in it's six to six right now. It's not eight to six. Uh, that's what the scoreboard says. Uh, you know what? I, I thought that it was just outside of the end zone, just close. But why would counter guys field it that way? I mean, aren't the rules of thumb you plant your heels on the 10 yard line, let it go over your head? He will not be back there in the second half <laughs> if he did that on that play. I tell you, one of the questions coming in was how prepared would the Bruins be? And uh, Ed Kazarian, boy, we got a sample of his fiery uh, fire and brimstone speech making at the banquet, Bob. Uh, he got his guys seemingly ready to play at this point. Right well, now. there's no question. He took a bunch of time to prepare that talk he gave yesterday. That was a great talk. But Rocky Long got his defense ready to play. I'm really impressed with Rocky Long and the defense of New Mexico right here in this football game. On third down and nine. They keep it on the quarterback sneak. Ed Kazarian's got a lot of time, Bob. He's only got one game. I mean, this is it for him. He's either going to be 1-0 or 0-1. And and a lifer at UCLA in Westwood. Kazarian's team tied at 6-6 as the first half of action is in the books here on Christmas Day. Rocky Long 
and his Lobos going to the locker room. They probably would take this score if you'd asked them before the game. Let's go back to Reese. All right, Mark, thank you very much. And you know what? The score ought to be 8-6 to six if you ask yeah. me. You, know, you see this happen from time to time. You see the plays in the kicking game and the tackle close to the line. And they Stern, walking around. Be happy. It's Christmas. You're only going to coach one game with these kids. They're not even having a good time out there. Carl Durrell's going to come in another week or so, and he's going to take over the scene. But these kids should have a good taste in their mouth about the offseason. You don't have a good taste in your mouth when you can't run the football. That's wrong. what's wrong with UCLA. Tyler Ebel, last two games, they struggled to run the ball once again. UCLA offensively with about 26 yards rushing. They're not going to beat anybody with those young quarterbacks if they don't run the football. And by the way, Mark, he's only coaching for one game. Give the guy a break. He's an academic counselor. He doesn't even know what's going on well, out there. That's the whole key of it. He's coaching for one game. Enjoy. It's Christmas. Onside kicks, trick plays, yes, trickeration, gadget Something. plays, all of that kind of stuff. You know, you know who did have a great first half? Probably Martha Burke because Katie Knight got to Well, there you go. Got to try. Coming up on the Dodge Halftime Report, we talk about some games flying under the radar. <laughs> Quite right. This halftime report brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Bruins and Lobos tied up at six. Halftime of the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Glad to have you with us, and Merry Christmas to everyone. You know, a recent study checked out all the graduation rates from four classes ending in 95. Headlocked at six apiece. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Mike Gottfried, Holly Rowe down in the field. Season's greetings to all of you from us here at ESPN. Guys, one of the big storylines coming into the game was UCLA. It would have been easy for them to go in the tank with a head coach that won't be coaching them next fall, but they've come out ready to play. Mark, I agree, and I give a lot of credit to UCLA's assistant football coaches, particularly their defensive coaches. I mean, they virtually shut New Mexico out here in the first half. New Mexico's only score on an interception return. I think for UCLA on offense, they're not going to consistently move the ball against all those looks in New Mexico, but maximum protect throw the ball down the field, catch New Mexico in a blitz and try to get a big play. And Mike, I think special teams before this game's over will play a big factor because we've seen a lot of mistakes in special teams. Yeah, Bob, go back to New Mexico. They had a chance to put a dagger in the heart of UCLA. Missed extra point. They took the ball from their own nine all the way down the football field and missed a field goal. And so if they could score a touchdown, they They'll get UCLA ready to pack and get on that plane. New Mexico's defense has been very stout during the first half. Coming into the ball game, they averaged just 3.2 yards per rush for opponents, and they've been pretty much up to snuff in the first half, allowing UCLA just 26 rushing yards. The Bruins to kick off, the Lobos to receive to begin this third quarter of play. With New Mexico to receive the ball. One wonders whether Dontrell Moore, who was shaken up in the first half, will be ready to go here in the second half. On the return, that's Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe with a nice kickoff return out to the 42-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, Dontrell Moore will play here in the second half. They have rewrapped his right angel ankle. He does look a little bit stiff, and he's running on it a little bit awkwardly, but he will try to play. Rocky Long also said he let uh, Katie Knight kick that field goal or extra point attempt because he felt like she deserved it. I know you guys were wondering that in the booth. As for UCLA, Ed Kazarian, he said they are going to continue to be patient. They're not panicking right now despite the 6-6 six to six score. He also said they will let Matt Moore, the quarterback, start this third quarter instead of alternating back to Drew Olson. Yeah, and I think Ed Kazarian, he doesn't have to panic no, because next week he goes back to academic, academic coordination. Out of the spotlight and under the, not under the heat anymore. Moore brought down at the line of scrimmage, the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Some of the big plays so far, it has been a defensive struggle, and that is the pivotal play so far. Desmar Black with a 55-yard interception return for a score, and then there's the extra point that was blocked. The kick coming from Katie Nida made history that she was the first female to attempt a kick in a bowl game in Division One football. Second down and 12 for the Lobos. Casey Kelly incomplete intended for Joe Manning. It'll be third and long. 
you get the feeling that you New Mexico guys has problems throwing it vertically downfield. Well, right there, Mark, New Mexico caught UCLA again in an all-out blitz, straight man-to-man, -man, had excellent protection. They just couldn't beat Joe Hunter, the corner. UCLA clearly an advantage, Mike, in talent in this football game. Oh, without a doubt. Will we see a screen pass right here? Had success in the first half with it. Third down and 12 for New Mexico. This is their best starting field position of the ball game. Dontrell Moore brought down at the line of scrimmage of the 40-yard line by Rodney Leslie, a guy who right now contemplating his future. Does he stay or does he jump to the NFL just a junior? Yeah, and Bob, you talked about UCLA's coaches settling this football team down. You come out in the third quarter and you have three plays and out, so now it's up to UCLA offense whether they learned anything in the first half. And let's credit UCLA's defense. Phil Snow, oh, the their, defensive their defense coordinator. defense has been outstanding. I mean, here's a guy that did a great job for two years at UCLA. There has to be a little bit of feeling, hey, I could have been the interim coach. Great job of preparation so far. Yes. And here is Greg. Stays on his feet amazingly. And he's got an alley. Oh, Craig Bragg. Merry Christmas, UCLA. You talked about it, Bob. Special teams, big play. Mike, it's just like the first game of the year again, coming out of bowl preparation. How many times do you think in bowl practice New Mexico actually covered a punt, full speed, live coverage tackling? Probably never. But also, you see the athleticism of Craig Bragg. Carl Durrell has to be a happy man. <laughs> that plate's pretty full coming into UCLA next year to coach this football team. Oh, he's They're got a lot of talent. Mixie in for the extra point. Boy, Bragg took a hit and put it on spin cycle. Guys came out of there, and nobody was close to him after that. A 74-yard punt return for a touchdown. And the first time the Bruins touched the ball here in the second half, they put six on the board. And two non-offensive touchdowns already in this football game. Fixie with the extra point, and UCLA jumps out to a 13-6 lead. Craig Bragg, and certainly this is a play that you can brag on a big bit. Took the hit and went the distance. Craig Bragg, number 87 for the, for the Bruins, who broke J.J. Stokes' sophomore receiving records this year for the 74-yard punt return for a touchdown. And UCLA now leads 13-6. to That was his first career punt return for a touchdown. From the two, and boy, they didn't fool anybody on that reverse attempt as Ratcliffe was brought down at the 10-yard line. A couple things on this punt return by Craig Bragg. First of all, you're gonna see missed tackles right here. But even more importantly, Nick Spiegel loses contain. Contain means you have to keep this football inside of you. Don't allow it outside. So Nick Spiegel loses contain. And Craig Bragg, Mike, you see the speed taking it to the end zone. In New Mexico right now, offensively has to stay exactly the way they played this first half. Patient because if they get down 10, 14 points, it's over. You see him again in the quads to one side. Spreading the field in an empty formation. In motion, that's three sacks. Incomplete at the 20 yard line, intended for counter. Mike, I'd like to talk about something. You see New Mexico, you're an offensive coach, doing just about everything there is in football. I mean, they're from two backs to one back to empty. Do you feel like New Mexico has an identity on offense? No, no identity right now. And I think of the injury to Dontrell Moore took them out a little bit of the running game, but they had success with the screens, have not come back with a screen pass since the first quarter. Second down and 10, Casey Kelly at the helm, still for the Lobos. Starting field position on this dive, once again, very poor. On the fly series, they give it to Boyd, and he's brought down immediately at the line of scrimmage, the 10-yard line, a nice stop 
by Spencer Havner. And we talk about this fly series that New Mexico runs. We're going to get a chance to see it right here. The ball snapped with him right behind the center, and they hand the ball here. But New Mexico, Mike, went and visited Arizona State. Arizona State does an awful lot of the fly series. It's obvious UCLA's seen this stuff before because they've done a great job against yeah, it. Yeah, UCLA sitting at home and uh, playing off blocks right now. The dominating defense in this football game. Mike, I wouldn't be surprised to see another screen right here. Here's Kelly to throw, and now takes off himself. Got an alley. Casey Kelly going to get the first down near the 30-yard line. A big play and a big conversion that time and a missed tackle by Havner. You talk about a big play, Mark. You're exactly right because if they punt this football back to UCLA, who knows what's going to happen. Casey Kelly, the coach's son right there, Scrambled, picked up the first down, a great move right here. He freezes a defender and then breaks away the first down. And how about the soft cast right here on his left arm? I think he actually had a plate put in yeah. there and some screws in the middle of the season. Has a six-inch plate in there with six screws that will come out after the season. First down and ten. Kelly again. Well, his legs are working as well as his arm. There's a flag down, though, back at the 25-yard line. Casey Kelly, if this stands, will pick up another first down for the Lobo. We're going to get a holding on the right offensive tackle, number 75, Jason Ensmeyer, right here, that negates just an excellent run. In this play, the holding penalty was behind the quarterback, Casey and Kelly. holding against the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. And Mike, I think you bring up a great point. You're going to see the hold right here. He just arm wrestles him down to the ground, and it's no significance at all because the defender's behind the quarterback. Just roll him on, on by, but that's big-time wrestling at its best. <laughs> Two points for the takedown. First down and 20. They move it back to the 20-yard line. Casey Kelly, the junior quarterback, former walk-on. Showing that he can scramble and run a little bit on the last two plays. What makes it worse is first and 20. <laughs> Kelly has a man downfield. Hits. His tight end, Krisak, gets back some of that yard to the 37-yard, make that the 35-yard line. Another part of the fly series package, bring the fly back in motion, snap the ball, and then come with the boot. And you're going to see number 85, the tight end, come out off the boot and make a big completion right here. But once again, Casey Kelly, Mike, good on the run right here. Misdirection. Any time type of misdirection seems to be working for New Mexico. We got the screens and then the misdirection pass. Mike, play. you've done a lot of games. Have you seen any more different offensive no. sets and plays than what New Mexico did? A whole bag of tricks, second down and five. Some strong running from Lance like Brody. Filling in for Dontrell Moore. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe and a late flag on the play. Ryan Buschetti involved in the little fracas down there. He was given Christmas wishes. Oh, that's what it was? Yes. <laughs> a little bit late, but hey, why not? I'll tell you, New Mexico will take that one. He was holding the mistletoe up. And, After uh, the play was over, we have a dead ball, personal foul against the defense. 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, automatic first down. Attack on a few more yards in New Mexico's favor. And it'll come across midfield to about the UCLA 44-yard line. We're going to get a chance to see it here late. Both these players tangled up. Right there, you see Bichetti right there. Like you always see the second hit. Hey guys, the referees I always see him. Interesting on first and ten here, both Justin Millay and Casey Kelly in the ball game. There's the double reverse counter. And what counter out of bounds at the 35? A nice gain Mike, for New Mexico. It's every play there isn't football you're seeing today. Here you're going to see the white counter. 
not on the counter, but on the reverse. And at the end of this, it's very close to being another 15-yard penalty on the sidelines because he's taken down clearly out of bounds. But you're seeing the gamut. This but is everything in football you're but seeing. But you know why offense. Rocky Long is doing this? Because they can't run against UCLA. They can't. They can't do the conventional things. It's a, the things like a reverse or misdirection plays that are working for them. A lot of smoke bombs and mirrors. <laughs> Second down and two. They're like Sinkman and Roy here. Yeah. This is the town for it, and there's more back in the ball game. They ran the fly series but faked it, and for more, let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, you talk about everything in football, and that's true. Rocky Wong actually played a little single wing tailback at high school. And so that fly series has some of the elements of the single wing. He actually got some old tapes of Dope Walker, the famous running back, when he was in high school running the single wing. Back in the 1940s, he said that that's where he got some of his ideas. He does a lot of it to try to keep his only quarterback, Casey Kelly, healthy. But uh, digging into the reaches of college football history for all the plays for this New Mexico team. Well, you just look over here, Mark. It yeah. just seems like a lot more smiles on that sidelines with New Mexico. I mean, there's a lot of guys enjoying this game because it's kind of a can't-lose situation. Let's face it, coming out of the Mountain West Conference, playing UCLA, it's kind of a feel-good story yeah. at New Mexico. They came in here with their chest collectively swollen up with pride. Third down and short, about one to go. And they blow the play dead. Mike, too long at the line of scrimmage right there. Yeah. Too much margin for error with those big offensive linemen having to hold that stance that long. They're going to get a procedure penalty right here on New Mexico. Football foul. Dead ball foul. False start against the offense. Movement in the offensive line prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. When you get... When you get belted on your headgear for uh, three quarters, you don't want to be sitting there. You want to come off the ball. Uh, quick count, quarterback sneak, but I, I didn't like the play call either. Coach Rocky Long's guys are uh, using a lot of finesse. You'll wonder at some point if they come back to the screen again if they had so much success. But they're not in the formation right here, Mike, that they run the screen on. Third down and six. Counter in motion. They come with the blitz, the Bruins do it, they get him back at midfield. Marcus Reese just lacerated that offensive line, knifing in there to make the big play. And it's incredible because New Mexico turned back protect both backs in protection. Look, it's turned back protection, both backs, it's maximum protection, but you're going to see Marcus Reese come through unblocked. They should have been able to pick that up in that protection. Right yeah. Marcus Reese, the lead tackler on the UCLA football team, the first year as a starter. Tells you a little bit about the talent. His fourth sack of the season. Last time the Lobos punted Bragg, took it back 74 yards for the score. This time, he calls for the fair catch of the 12-yard line, a 38-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Well, it's warm and sunny here in Vegas. Well, not quite warm, but it's about 50 degrees. Not the story back east, but don't really feel for you. See ya. <laughs> we'll be back. Wilson. And I'm Matt Moore. We're the two quarterbacks at UCLA. And I want to wish everybody in Piedmont, California, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, especially back home in Valencia. All right, and there's a look at more. I want to wish my family, my wife Sarah, and uh, my kids back in Miami, my mom and dad in Toronto, and my brother up there a Merry Christmas, and my in-laws in Wisconsin. <laughs> Mark, I'd like to do the same. Wish my wife yeah. Joanne, my daughter Audra, and my son Clay uh, back home in South Bend in the snow, and looking forward to getting back home late tonight. And I would like to wish uh, Mickey, my wife, and Mindy, who's back home, and Marcy's out here with Dead me. Ball foul. False start against the offense. The entire offensive line move. Five yard penalty, still first down. And I have two hometowns, yeah. Crestline, Ohio, and Mobile, Alabama. All of <laughs> wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And Mike, Bless a lot of people, we know this because of coaching. These players started back in August, players and coaches. They're away from home today on Christmas Day. It says a lot about these two teams to come out here and play this hard on Christmas Day away from home. I know they'll be anxious to get this over with and get back home as well. Yeah, but they played well. Ebel out to the 16-yard line. It's going to be a big series for New Mexico's well, defense right here. Let's go here. back to that last series, Mike. New Mexico has the football deep in UCLA territory. Third down and one. The procedure penalty makes it third and six, and then they get sacked. 
negates an opportunity to score points. Let it be holding him right here. You're going to get the ball right back. Good field position. Second down and six. Big sacrifice that these players make being away from home and in foreign places during Christmas Bragg. Right down, short of the first down at the 19-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Holly, Christmas for you, too. That's right. I want to wish everyone happy holidays. Oh. And especially my son, Mikhailin, and my mom and dad, and all my brothers and sisters. And i like to wish you guys also. Yeah, it's been a you. fun season working with all of you. It certainly has. I second that motion. You know what? It just doesn't seem right, Mike. You and I both from back east. A cactus decorated in Christmas lights. It's just the pine tree thing is, is what Christmas is really all about, right? I don't know, Bob. I live in Miami. I like that sun. <laughs> a sunny looking play for the Bruins. Nice catch by Manny White. And White looking to punish a few DBs in the process out to the 42. They got a flag down at the 30. Mark, they got away with one holding, but then the umpire caught uh, another uh, personal foul, I believe. Yeah, Mike, that one's coming back. That's holding. There were multiple holds on that play. <laughs> Ed Kazarian going with Matt Moore here to start the second half. Holding against the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Replay third down. Guys, do we underestimate or overstate either way the importance of this game and how much of an audition it is for the players mike no i i think you're exactly right carl durrell uh, sitting back in uh, ucla or in denver right now but just take for instance two quarterbacks drew olsen and matt moore matt moore's had the better today but how do you keep two quarterbacks happy that are pro prospects down the way because both these guys are excellent quarterbacks Looking at third down and two for Matt Moore. Lobos coming with pressure, batted down. Nice play by Terrell Golden, the former walk-on, the 5'10 junior. And it's fourth down. In comes the punting unit for the Bruins. Mike, once again, your favorite position, the Wolfback coming on the blitz. And you're going to see number three, Terrell Gordon. He ends up the field. He's underneath. And he just snuffs the ball in the backfield. This New Mexico defense is good, Mike. See, you've got to be tough to be a wolf. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're going to have a term, wolf. You know, Terrell Golden is a good wolf. Fourth down. Once again, New Mexico almost blocked the punt earlier. Wow. And a great really one by Vixie. All the way back to the 26 counter. Yard return on a 54 yard boot by Fixie. A little uh, extracurricular activity after the whistle. Bruins leading by seven points with 6.18 to go. UCLA 9 and 4 in their last 13 bowl games, but the Lobos hang it tough when we come back to Las Vegas. Ten's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Las Vegas, the freedom from Dollsville. When Vegas calls, will you be ready? And by Saturn, makers of The View, redesigned L-Series, and the all-new Ion. I'll tell you, I took a walk down Flamingo Road the other day, guys. Thought I was in Paris when I saw the Eiffel Tower. I was a little bit stunned. Stay away from those blackjack tables, though. Mark, this is your kind of town. Of course, I've seen you everywhere. I've seen you in Iowa City, Madison, Wisconsin. You said you like my derby. I was Every place today. is your kind of time. That's a fumble. That's a loose ball. Dontrell Moore recovers it, fortunately, for the Lobos. Back at the 26-yard line, Brandon Chiller there to put the clamps on him. UCLA has been a very strong third-quarter team all year. You see how dangerous this is? It's clearly a backwards pass. Dontrell Moore, you see right there, his eyes aren't on yeah. the football, Mike. He's looking down the field. He saw that block being missed. Exactly. Dontrell Moore, the Mountain West Conference freshman of the year this season. Having troubles hanging on to the ball today, guys. Lost a fumble, recovered one of his own, and that time unable to make the catch. Now second down and 19. They come right back to him, though. For the ball carrier. Showing a measure of faith and 
Actually, it's number 34, Brody, on the carry. Mike, we talk all the time about staying in a rhythm on offense. First down, when you have a negative play like that on first down, it's almost insurmountable to kind of come back and have a manageable third down. Yeah, get the punt team ready. Because this is a big third down for New Mexico. They need something good to have this offensive football team. You see UCLA dominance in the third quarter. Mike, just don't turn it over. At least punt the football back UCLA up if you don't convert the third down. Don't have another negative play. Kelly on the screen, but read very well that time by Marcus Reese, the top tackler on the defense, the captain of the team, one of them. There's that screen I was asking for. Well, it didn't work. You're going to see Marcus Reese right here, the middle linebacker in a one linebacker defense. You're right, Mike. He smells this thing out, then accelerates. Just too athletic for the offensive lineman to block. Marcus Reese having a good football game. Well, your point about getting behind the chains on first down, they're not good enough on offense to overcome with their passing game. And their worst nightmare, Carl Bragg back returning this punt right here for UCLA, and it's a low line. Goss has it bounced, and he gets a very, very good roll down to the 23. Got about 20 yards of bounce. Bruins will start from their own 23 when we come back to the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Parking in Albuquerque, and Merry Christmas. I miss y'all. Ashley, Amber, I love you guys, too, and Merry Christmas. All right, first down and 10 on Christmas Day here. The sun out in full fashion. And a beautiful, uh, kind of chilly day, but right now UCLA leading by seven. Lobo's coming with some pressure. Moore on the out and up downfield for Bragg, and it's incomplete. Well, folks, following us at 8 Eastern, our Christmas Day Capital One Bowl Week double dip continues when Tulane takes on Hawaii and their explosive offense since the inaugural Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. Timmy Chang at quarterback for the Rainbow Warriors. Look at those impressive numbers on the season. Over 4,000 yards passing. Second down and 10. Backs lining up out of the eye for the Bruins. The toss to Evil into the boundary. Evil gaining about eight. It'll be third down and two to go for UCLA. And Bob, what about this 3-3-5 defense? We've seen a lot of that this year. Is it in vogue? Mark, I don't think there's any question it's in vogue. You just look in this conference, in the Mountain West Conference, Air Force now runs it. Bronco Mendenhall, the defensive coordinator in New Mexico, is now going to BYU. BYU's going to run it. West Virginia, Wake Forest, uh, South Carolina, Mississippi State. It's a unique defense, and once again, you see these wolves creeping up on the line of scrimmage, bringing pressure from the outside. The pass complete. Out of the backfield, J.D. Groves, the fullback, and depending on the spot, it looks like he got the first down. You see the pressure coming. The screen pass from Matt Moore hits the fullback out in the flat. Good open field tackle right there. It looks like they're going to measure right here, Mark. But something really unique about New Mexico's defense. They play every player left and right. They don't flip anyone. So you never have a predetermined idea who the rusher is and who the dropper is, Mike. And there's just so many different combinations of blitzes. I like this scheme of defense. I think it gives teams like New Mexico a chance to scramble around that are undersized and make things happen. It's like the wishbone on offense because the wishbone at Air Force keeps them in the, in the ball game in the Mountain West Conference. But... I'm going to say this. I, get, I think UCLA's getting a better read on it right now. They're doing a better job here in the second half of play calling. Kelly Skipper, who's play calling without Bob Toledo's help today, because usually Bob Toledo made the calls. Well, Kelly Skipper, the offensive coordinator, saying coming into this game that this is a great chance for him and for his offense to show well and to finish on a high note. First down and 10. Lewis in motion. Evil with a nice run over the right side. Folks, we will welcome the men and women of Operation Enduring Freedom watching the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl on AFN, the Armed Forces Network. And a special salute to those assigned to the 39th Wing taking a break on Christmas Day at the Low Places Lounge in Indralik Air Base in Turkey. Happy holidays, folks, and thanks 
for all that you do protecting our interests on foreign soil. Mark, they're the real heroes. No God doubt. bless all of them. Second down and three. Eagle again. Hit at the 43-yard line. Close to another first down for UCLA. We're here at Sam Board Stadium for the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl in New Mexico out of the Mountain West Conference against the Pac-10's UCLA Bruins. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey, Mike Gottfried, Holly Rowe down in the field here on Christmas Day in a defensive battle so far. The key play so far was the interception return by Desmar Black and then another one for UCLA right here. Bragg on a 74-yard punt return, breaking a couple of tackles and then after that untouched down the sideline. First down and 10. Give it to the first man through, Manny White. Stopped up by D.J. Renteria. Manny White was actually the starting tailback at one point, and uh, he uh, subsequently not really lost the job, but they decided to use him in a different manner and brought in Tyler Ebel, and the rest is history. Ebel running for almost a 1,000 yards in the season. And Manny White's folks, guys, have legendary tailgate parties before the games. I was looking for them in the parking lot. Couldn't find them before this one. Second down and seven. There he is again, Manny White. Out over midfield to the 48 of New Mexico. And a flag down on the play. Looks like we're going to get a holding right here on UCLA. Once again, a penalty plays havoc with these offensive coordinators trying to call these plays, Mike. the offense 10 yards penalty from the spot of the foul replay second down well there's more great college football action as capital one bowl week continues tomorrow on espn with two more games boston college toledo in the motor city bowl at five eastern then the inside bowl pittsburgh against oregon state at 8 30 eastern time like you talk about these different conferences as we see toledo right there going against boston college in the motor city bowl i'm impressed with the mountain west conference a lot of good athletes in this conference. They play a lot of big-time non-conference games. 22 of the 40 non-conference games they played this year were against bowl teams, and they always play them on the road. So the Mountain West Conference, I think, is an up-and-coming league. A second down, and they come up with a sack led by Nick Spiegel on defense. With under a minute to go here in the third period, the Lobo defense still howling. Well, when, when you see now Nick they, Spiegel, the outside rusher. The I'm sorry, Mike, go ahead. Turned him loose. Another big sack right here for New Mexico's defense. Yeah, what a saying, Bobby. When you get a team, New Mexico gets a team behind the chains. Well, they, they turn it all loose. Third sack today for the Lobo defense. And, Mike, once again, we go back to the holding penalty. Yep. All of these long yardage situations are results of penalties. Third and 19. Here they come again. Bringing the heat on Moore. A lot of contact, both the receiver and the defensive back falling down at the 37. Junior Taylor being covered by Desmar Black, who already has a pick for a touchdown. And now they woof at each other a little bit. And Black, a, a lot of woofing down. going on in this football game, Mark. It looks like both teams right now, these coaches need to get these players together and settle them down. But I think early in this round, you're going to see Junior Taylor push <laughs> Desmar Black, Mike, very rarely do they ever call offensive pass interference. Pass interference. All year I've seen some bad calls in pass interference. That's a one call that's not uniformed uh, in, in the country, around the country. Well, you know, Mike, Bob's a defensive coach, so he would yeah. see it that way and that they never call it on the receiver, right? Well, <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> I agree with him, though. That, that guy was a valid point. Pushed. A valid yeah. point, though. Valid point. Seemed to have his hands in the... DB's back that time. Fourth down, Fixie into punt. And another good punt by Fixie, driving counter back to the 15. Boy, he seemed to have an alley coming back the other way, but he cut it 
to his right. He a 40 yard signal. <laughs> well, three periods are in the books. 15 minutes to go here at the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl on Christmas Day. We'll be right back. In the city of entertainment, Las Vegas, Nevada, it's the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl. Back for the start of the fourth quarter with the UCLA Bruins leading 13 to 6. New Mexico, though, with the ball first down and 10 from its own 19 yard line. Landrick Brody plowing his way down to the 23 yard line. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Desmar Black with the first big play of the game, a 55 yard interception return. His first of the season and took it the distance. And then Craig Bragg with a 74 yard punt return for a score. Gave the Bruins the lead. 6 6 at halftime, and that play right there has been the difference maker. Mark, the one thing New Mexico has had some success with is play action pass, counter boot action, hitting the tight end. I look for him at some point to come back to that off play action. AC Kelly. Picked off, it bounced off, Kusev's back, and this will come back for a score. Page for the Bruins. <laughs> An incredibly unfortunate bounce for New Mexico. Well, they, they came with the play action. They did throw it to the tight end. As you see, number 85 right here working to the flat. The unfortunate thing, it bounces off the back. You see Jared Page, the true freshman, pick it up and might take it to the end zone. This should be a penalty right now. But the true freshman, Jared Page, he's had an excellent year. Really misfortune right there for New Mexico. The ball bounces off. Zach Presides back. Touchdown, UCLA. How many non-offensive touchdowns now? I think that's three in this football game. A punt return and two interception returns for scores. The type of play that can really take a lot of wind out of your collective sails. It's something that the Bruins have done all season long. Returns for touchdown. September the 14th, Spencer Havner scored on a 23-yard return against Oklahoma State. On October 5th, Ricky Manning scored his first career touchdown against Oregon State. And then November the 2nd, Havner again picked up another touchdown, 42 yards. The Bruins continuing the trend here today. And then December the 7th, Ben Emanuel II scored on a 41-yard pick against Washington State. And then just a few moments ago, this one, courtesy of Gerard Page. Boy, bounced off of the shoulder pad of Kreisep. You didn't like that little move at the end there, did you? Well, I, not that I didn't like it, but at some point, it's a penalty. One thing in New Mexico's favor, and I know right now it looks bleak because New Mexico is not a quick strike offense by any sense of the word, but they played four games this year that came down to the final play of the game. So they've been in a bunch of close games. They've been behind before. Mike, this was a two and four football team that came back and won five of their last seven. They so it's didn't not over. Play yet. UCLA. Oh. <laughs> UCLA his defense Phil Snow got to give him credit now they they really had a good game plan and New Mexico needed to run the football without Dontrell Moore they're uh, behind the eight ball Dixie with the kick wow and he got all of this one Lobos will start off on their own 20 yard line and you ever think about painting yourself blue well Check this out. Plenty of bowl week activities for both teams. Sunday, both teams checking out the Blue Man Group live at Luxor. Now, these performances are like no other and features three bald and blue characters. Look at this. A multi-sensory experience. Coach Rocky Long, uh, the brave type. Unafraid, yeah, looking for the other one on the other side of the cheek. And, uh, after the show, the players and coaches uh, met the performers. A good time for everybody involved. First down and 10. Casey Kelly finds his man, Manning. And he put it on the ground. 
And the Bruins come up with the turnover at the 31-yard line. Brandon Chiller. The wheels are falling off the wagon. Well, Mike, and when you're the underdog, you can't turn the football over. You're going to see Joe Manning right here. The ball is stripped out of there, and Chiller, the linebacker, comes up with the turnover. Once again, you mentioned Phil Snow. You mentioned his defensive football team. New Mexico hadn't scored on them all day, and UCLA has scored on defense. So clearly, this defensive football team from UCLA deserves a lot of credit. First down and 10. The Bruins working with a short field at the 31. Moore on the quick three-step drop. Now you talk about a defense, you've got to bow up right here because they cannot afford, with their offense struggling like they are, to give up any more points. Yeah, but let's talk about a heck of a deal as we see Rocky Long. Let's talk about Ed Kazarian. One-time shot as the head coach, UCLA grad. This is good as it gets. It's 20 to 6, coaching in a bowl game, winning the bowl game. He's going to make history because if he holds on, he'll be the only coach in America ever to be 1 0. Hey, and quit. Retired. Yeah, I quit. <laughs> Go out on top. This is Evo stopped up at the 26 yard line. Kazarian started Olsen, then brought in Moore in the second quarter. Moore has led the way. Both of these guys filling in for Corey Poss. Holly Moore. Holly? But, Corey Posh, you know something about playing quarterback for UCLA. What must these young freshmen be going through? A bull situation, their first real action of the year. It's been stressful. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Coach Rocky Long, he's got a unique defense, and I think we struggled a little bit in the first half with, uh, you know, obviously it's, we, we've never played against a defense like that. So uh, I think we, we've made some nice changes at halftime, and hopefully we can uh, score an offensive touchdown here, which we're about to be able to do. And a nice catch. Down to the 10-yard line, that's Keith Carter, the tight end. Holly, back to you. Well, Corey, you're one of the all-time leaders in scoring and uh, passing at UCLA. What's next for your future now that you're healthy from the broken leg? Well, uh, I, well I'm not quite healthy enough because I would have played in this game, but uh, I'm going to try and just, you know, pursue the uh, professional career as best I can and, and uh, play for as long as I, I'm healthy enough, and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. It's been so unusual to have Ed Kazarian as the head coach here, but tell us what the players think about him. He's been a bigger-than-life figure this week. Yeah, he's done an unbelievable job, and uh, he's just been great. You know, he's been like the spirit, and he you know, answers all the questions and gets up in front of all the people, and, uh, and I, I, he's done a great job. I've learned a lot from him over the years, and, and uh, learned even more from him in these last couple weeks. All right, well, thanks very much. Good luck in your future, Corey. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right, second and goal after that run by Tyler Evo. I'll tell you what, Ed likes it. He's a pretty good kid. Can you imagine Ed Kazarian sitting around drinking a Coca-Cola and saying, you know what, I was the head coach at UCLA. We won this game. We had a great game plan. We did this, did that. That yeah, was undefeated, yet. Here's Evo again. Slips, though, back at the two-yard line and stopped up right there. Parker in on the stop for the Lobos. Without a doubt, winning a bowl game is the best feeling in coaching. Because, and playing, because when the game's over, you get away from football for a while, you get a chance to get home, and when you reconvene for off-season workouts and for recruiting, it's a positive feeling to get back. So don't ever, Ed Kazarian, take for granted winning a bowl game. But he's not gonna reconvene any time. Well, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. Third down and goal, backs out of the eye. I'll First man what. through, stopped up at the one-yard line. Looks like that ball may have been a fumble. Out. That ball came out. They froze. Are they going to make the call here? No. They're going to say that White was down. Looked like it popped loose for a split second there. We're going to get a couple looks at this again. Let's just look and see. See, here's another Ed Kazarian right here. He's going for the fourth down. He's a coach. He's a, he's got a chance. Look at him. They love him already. There's hey. love. Don't start congratulating yeah. yet, Ed. I don't have to You're worry about the You're not in the end zone just yet. <laughs> Fourth and one. And this, he could be noted for this call right here. Well, they seemingly rallied around their new interim head coach. I'll tell you, it's a high-risk, high-reward call right here, Ed. Evil up top. He's got it down. That's here for Ed. Ed Kazarian rolling the dice and coming up. Yo 11, as they say in Vegas, Mike. Yo 11. He 
Abel with his 10th rushing TD of the season. And now the Bruins putting a little bit of room between themselves and the Lobos. Mixie in for the extra point. With 10.40 to go in the fourth quarter, UCLA leading now 27 to 6. But there is a flag down on the far side of the field. And it looks like they're going to have to do this one all over again. Imagine, Mark, all the alumni meetings that they can, UCLA now has a diplomat. They can send Ed Kazarian out as the winningest coach in college football without, uh, he's batting a uh, hundred right here, a thousand. Here we go one more time. They take it off the board. Fixie, a 25-yard extra point, which is also good. Ed Kazarian says, whether you end up with a nest egg or a goose egg in life, it all depends on who you're partnered with. He's got a good group of partners right now. We'll be right back. Continuing in earnest here at the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl, Bragg and Ebel, a dynamic combo as UCLA storming back with 24 unanswered points. And yeah, number two, the deuce is on the loose as Fixie gets set to kick off. UCLA with a 27 to 6 lead here on Christmas Day. Things looked rather promising for the Lobos at the end of the first half. We were deadlocked at six apiece, but UCLA exploding here in the second half. The Bruins defense now picking it up as the Lobos will start off on their own 20-yard line. Mark Jones, Bob Davey, Mike Gottfried here in the booth and down in the field. Holly Rowe, guys, uh, interesting uh, time and uh, interesting when you look at coaching as a whole. Bob. Well, Mark, we see a lot of smiles on their UCLA sidelines, and they should. Ed Kazarian deserves a lot of credit for what he's done. The players should smile. They're not playing a great game. They're going to win. But there's two sides to every story, and I can't help but think about Bob Toledo sitting at home. In 1989, I was coaching at Texas A&M. We played a very good Pittsburgh team in the Sun Bowl that Mike Godfrey was the head coach of. He did not get to coach in that bowl game. So in a minute, Mike, you can talk about the dynamics of that from Bob Toledo's perspective. First down and 10. Kelly back to pass under heat. Gets it off. And a nice catch made at the 35-yard line. Casey Kelly eluding harm's way. Showing a lot of skill in the pocket. Pharrell making the catch. Bob going back to... And Mike, uh, interesting point that Bob brought up about the whole coaching scenario, not getting to get the payoff in a bowl game. Well, in 1989, uh, Pittsburgh told me that you could coach in the bowl game, but they said, we're only going to pay you one year, or you can get to five years and not coach in the bowl game. I'm not stupid. I took the five <laughs> years. So even though I, it was a dark day, it was a tough day. But Bob Toledo's sitting at home right now, and he can't understand probably why he's not here. He started the season, Mark. He brought all these guys in. He recruited them all. He re recruited all the coaches. He brought them in there. So he should cheer in this victory. But what is the reason that he's not here? Because the administration probably doesn't want to see him carried off the field at the end of the game or an emotional scene uh, or whatever. But he should be here. You guys have both been in that kind of scenario. There should be some kind of protocol, you would think, to follow. When you look at what's happened recently down in Alabama with Francione and the Texas A&M situation, as well as recently with the John L. Smith development going from Louisville to Michigan State, there should be some sort of, I'm not saying a manual, but some protocol to follow, don't you think? Being able Martin. to tie things up there should be but I don't know if it's feasible because it's always difficult the timing when opportunities come so many things happen it's always going to be a little bit sticky anytime there's a coaching change but I agree Mike one of the toughest things is watching your football team oh. particularly when you have a lot of young football players two true freshman quarterbacks young wide receivers young players on defense you were a seven and three team at one point in this year you lose to USC, you lose to Washington State. To sit at home and watch the football team play, 
That's a tough, tough thing for an outgoing coach. I think it was two years ago or three years ago, he was 10-0 and 0 right. playing in Miami. Then all of a sudden, he's out of a job, and you won't even let him come here and coach. Uh, I have to question uh, that move. He should be here. I, I still firmly believe his team would rather he be here. And then Mike, what's so significant? Excuse me, Mark. If you look at it, as you know, coaching at Pittsburgh, the Penn State game was huge. When you're at UCLA and you lose to USC four straight times, that's a difficult situation. And losing those high-profile games at the end, but I do agree with the point. He should be here coaching this football game Back if he answer. was provided that opportunity to do so. No, he. I don't believe he was. Uh, again, this this football team is is has showed a lot here today because they could have packed it in early. But I think New Mexico had a chance early to take control of this game and kind of uh, take them on, but they didn't do it. Missed the extra point, missed the field goal. And now looking at a third down and 14 with under nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They have yet to throw the ball downfield, instead going underneath. And the catch made once again by number five, Farrell. His second of the day. We talked about complimenting the UCLA assistants because a lot of distractions. Uh, they, they could have uh, spent a lot more time on the phone trying to find a job, but they worked hard with this football team. And there you see Phil Snow on the yeah, side. He's lines. still into it. Did a great job at Arizona State. Uh, came to UCLA. I believe took them from last in the Pac-10 to first in the Pac-10. Right here, fourth down and 12. Uh, New Mexico with a last gasp effort right here to convert this thing. Got to get to the 25 for the first down. Casey Kelly steps up. And it's incomplete. Intended for Rashawn Sanders, but Matt Weir was on him tight. And they turn it over on downs. Well, the UCLA Bruins blue looking pretty good right now. And speaking of blue men, check these guys out. Part of the pomp and circumstance of Vegas. The sun now beginning to set on a very pristine landscape here in the desert. Las Vegas, Nevada, and things seemingly setting on New Mexico's hopes. They trail 27 to 6. Ebo running into the boundary on the toss. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Talked about his toughness. The little guy, just 170 pounds, but very durable. His father, the Marine that Holly Rowe mentioned earlier in the broadcast, used to make him do 50 push-ups, guys, before he was allowed to go outside and play with his friends when he was a kid growing up. I knew he was a pretty good athlete when I read that he dunked a basketball when he was 16 at five foot six. Now he's not much bigger than five foot six now. He hasn't grown that much since. <laughs> Second and seven. And Moore slips and falls. They're going to down it at the 33. Looking on the play, a loss. Bob, Matt, excuse me, Mark. Matt Moore's done some good things to Yeah, I was just getting ready to say to Bob, he didn't turn the ball over in the second half. And I think that's the difference in the football game. I think so, too. But if you're asking me the difference in this football game, I go back to Craig Bragg on the punt return for a touchdown in UCLA's defense. But I agree, UCLA's offense looks much more under control and stable right now with Matt Moore in the third and 14. Bragg split wide to the bottom of your screen to the right there, third down and long. They run the draw to Ebel. Another Ebel, the ball carrier. Right down at the 37-yard line. 